on guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna be talking about this crazy trippy 3D perspective transition. Now, a lot of you guys know me for my Adobe Premiere tutorials, for my Adobe After Effects tutorials. We have used some other softwares in the past. Today's video is gonna also be using another software that we haven't talked about before. We're gonna be using Blender, which is a free 3D software. So those of you who are scared about 3D, don't be intimidated. We're gonna take you through the steps. This isn't just an Adobe channel. This channel is dedicated to showing you guys how to create awesome videos, no matter what it takes, no matter what tool we're using. When it comes to what we are making today, you may have seen this from Alfie Dwyer, AKA Zezima on Instagram. He makes some amazing transitions, taking this concept, but bringing it to a new level. So to create this, we're gonna do something called projection mapping, where essentially you're taking a 2D image and you're projecting it onto a 3D object. It may sound complicated to a lot of you, but trust me, it's very easy. And we're gonna show you a bunch of tips and tricks along the way. I also wanna shout out Thomas Rabor. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I originally tried pulling this off in Cinema 4D, but after stumbling across this tutorial in Blender, it made everything seem a lot more simple. So if you're gonna watch this video, it's only fair you go and leave a like, subscribe to him as well. My video is gonna be more step-by-step, -step, baby steps, but I'm also gonna show you a lot of different customization. Make sure you stay tuned for that. All the links will be in the description. Other than that, let's get right into this. All right guys, so quickly before we start, quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. What better way to start off the new year than by learning something new, upgrading your skill set? What I love about Skillshare, every time I come back on the website, I'm always clicking on something, I'm always taking away something, and it's always getting my creative thinking flowing and moving me in the right direction. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There's zero ads. It's a great place to really dive into a specific community. Lately, I've been watching this Learn Blender full course by Joe Bailey. If you just look through all the different lessons, 155, it's super in-depth. A better way to get into it than by watching a little beginner introduction course. If you guys are interested, Skillshare is very affordable, less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use the link at the top of my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. I'm gonna do this in Premiere to start. I went to file, new sequence in Adobe Premiere or whatever video software you're using. I went to settings and I made this sequence not 1920 by 1080, but 1080 by 1080. So we're working with that one to one square aspect ratio that's gonna be useful when we hop into Blender and start setting everything up so that it lines up properly. Essentially, we just need a screenshot of the area where we want to create this transition. So let's create the screenshot maybe right about here. Also, you don't need any live footage or 3D rendered footage to pull this off. If you want to just practice and try it out, you could just grab some random images off Google or any other photos that you may have. It's all gonna work the same. You just need an image or a screenshot to get started. In Adobe Premiere, I can just click this button. Let's go ahead and create a new folder here. I've already got it made, it's projection transition. I'm gonna select this and I'm going to name this transition frame one, click okay. Before you guys move the cursor, make sure you click this add marker button just to add where you're pulling that frame from so you can come back and put the 3D animation in later. Now let's find the area where we'd like to transition into, maybe the first frame of this little part here. Let's name this transition frame two. Next, you're gonna wanna install Blender. The link will be down below. Just go ahead and click download, follow the prompt to install it and open it up. So if you guys are completely new to Blender, what you need to know is in the top left here, you can change between object and edit mode. This is gonna be very important moving forward. So make sure you're paying attention to if I'm in object mode, if I'm in edit mode. Also in the top right here, you may want to switch these. This is viewport shading, this is rendered shading. So if for some reason you're not seeing any of your materials, it may be just because you need to change your view in the top right. Up here above my head, you have your little pan controls. Of course, you can just use your mouse for that. If you click this button, it'll go into camera view. Another important thing you need to know for this, if you select anything on the left here, this is how you move, rotate, scale, any object that you're working with. So that's our absolute basics. Let's go ahead and start off by switching into edit mode. There's different selection options in the top left. Let's go ahead and switch to face select. We're gonna select the faces of this cube and then just start deleting. You can select it, you can click X, and you can select faces. Now you'll see this top is open. Select another, faces, and let's delete three of these. So at this point, if you wanna do one quick little animation test just to try this out, you can just keep these two faces here and it'll serve as sort of a background. What I like to do is I like to delete all of the faces off of here and just kind of build the world around it from scratch. So we're just gonna keep clicking to delete those. Now we're left with just this one little plane here. 
select this plane, we're going to go ahead and right click it and we're going to click subdivide. So now that we've subdivided this, you see we can select each of these different four corners. You hold down shift, select all of those, you can right click and subdivide again. This is going to determine how blocky the transition is going to be. So I'm going to subdivide this one more time, right click subdivide, and that should be good enough. We got a decent sized grid here. If you do anything more than this, then there's going to be a lot of clicking. So this should be just enough. But once you're at this spot here, I'm just going to move and get a nice little sideways perspective. You can select each of these little subdivided parts here. Click E on your keyboard once you've selected them. And that way you can extrude. So with this extrude, we're going to click. I'm going to do that for each of these, just selecting, clicking E and raising them up. If you want, you can make it in some sort of defined pattern. We'll go into that a little bit more when it comes to adding our image over top of this. All right. So once you've extruded those up a bit, you should have something that looks like this. Now you'll see if I click in my mouse wheel and I just kind of pan the camera up, it doesn't look like anything's extruded whenever we're looking down at this. And this is the whole basis of how we're going to pull off this projection mapping effect. We're going to project that screenshot that we took onto this image here, and then we're going to create some camera movement so that we can turn like this. Another thing I should mention over here on the right, all your options. Let's click output properties without anything selected, and let's change the resolution from 1920 by 1080 to 1080 by 1080. So we're working with a square aspect ratio. So now let's set up our camera by default. You should already have a camera in here in the top right. So let's go ahead and select that camera. Let's click on object properties where it says cube here. Let's just select this and let's change this from cube to camera. So you'll see your location. You have your rotation. What we're going to do is we're going to set the locations to zero except for our Z axis. That way we're just going to have a camera hovering over top of our little selection here. Speaking of which, let's select that cube. Let's click S on our keyboard and drag out a little bit just to make that a bit bigger. We can now click onto our camera view just to see what that's looking like. Let's also on our right here, select that camera again. Let's click on this green little object data properties, the one that's a green camera. We're going to change the type from perspective to orthographic. And now you see it looks a lot more square. Now we can grab this orthographic scale and we can move this so that this camera view kind of gray outline is surrounding the white square that we see here and lining it up properly. So again, popping back into our camera view. Now we want to project an image onto here. The top right, select your cube object. These options here, click this little red material properties option. You'll see there's already a default material onto here. So we can just edit this default material. Wherever it says surface, let's go ahead and change this to diffuse BSFD. Wherever it says color, let's click this little yellow dot here and we're going to go and add a image texture. Let's click this open button under image texture. And we're going to go and find the image that we saved from our video editing software. So mine was called transition frame one open that up. And again, if you're not seeing any color on this, make sure you are viewing it as shaded. So clicking these options in the top right to cycle. So let's click into our camera view. You can tell that it's just not lined up properly here. So let's go over to the UV editing tab. And this is what that looks like. Let's pop into our camera view so we can see those two lined up next to each other. So now what you need to do again, make sure you are in edit mode. If you're in object mode, you won't be able to select the subdivisions. So switch to edit mode holding down shift on your keyboard, click and select all of these subdivisions. You have to do it manually because again, we're selecting these top parts. So if you use some sort of selection tool, you might select something that you don't want to select. So holding down shift, once you have those all selected, go ahead and click U on your keyboard and you're going to want to click project from view. And now you'll see all the squares on the left in the UV mapping section properly projected onto this surface. So if we click out so we can see what that looks like in our viewport shading, here's what that looks like looking good. So this is the reason why I like setting up the UV mapping first before we start doing anything with the cameras, before we start adding the second perspective. At this point, you can do a lot of customization for this effect. You can choose different things in this scene here that you want to showcase in your transition. And when I say showcase, what I mean is we're going to take things that you want to pop that you want the viewer to see, and we're going to drag that closer to the camera by changing Z distance. So for example here, for me, I have this 3D character sitting right here. Let's kind of make him come a lot closer to the screen. So let's pop out of our camera view so we can see the 3D cubes. Let's select the cubes wherever our 3D character is situated. And let's subdivide these a little bit more. So we're going to right click subdivide. We'll do that with all the squares that our character is in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all the squares that our character is in and we're just going to make those a bit higher than the rest. So I'm going to click E, kind of pop those up. 
And again, make sure you're getting a nice little perspective in your viewport here. If you're over top of this, you can be making this a lot more taller than you think you are. So just getting a nice little sideways perspective. So there you go. You can see your 3D character is extruded a lot higher up than the other stuff in the scene, all this background things in the scene. So now when we go back to our camera view, it still looks normal, which is perfectly fine. So let's set up some camera movement so we can start seeing some perspective. So to set this up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop back into object mode. I'm going to click shift A on my keyboard. That's going to give me this little add shortcut here. I'm going to go ahead and add an empty. I'm going to add a plane axis. And what we're going to do now is we're going to link this plane axis to the camera. It's essentially the same thing in After Effects as creating a null to control some 3D object or a camera. So you want to have this camera below our empty plane axis in the hierarchy of the scene. So I'll click and drag it below. Now what I'm going to do is select the camera, holding down control, select the empty here. I'm going to hover over I'm going to hover over my viewport and click control P to parent that and let's just select object now you see this dashed line showing that they're parented together now if we select this empty plane axis we go down to our object properties this little yellow square you can now change this rotation and you'll see it's now rotating both of those together so you've kind of set up this camera control on the axis so let's just set up a little keyframe we're in UV editing tab still let's click back to our normal layout tab now we have this timeline going on let's pop out of our camera view so starting at zero what I like to do is if you don't want an instant change you can maybe go forward like a few frames maybe five or ten frames so I'm gonna start at frame 10 I'm going to select my empty plane axis here. Let's even just double click and I'll name this to camera control. So grab camera control, click on object properties. I'm going to keyframe our rotation Y. So let's click this little dot right here to set up our first keyframe. You should see that popped on your timeline. Drag a bit, 40 frames, and then we're going to go ahead and crank this up. So I like to make this around 90. You can do negative 90 depending on what direction you're going. So set that to 90 and to activate the keyframe, you need to click back on this diamond. And now that won't be red. You'll see the keyframe on your timeline here. And now if we click play, you'll see the animation of the camera that we just created. So let's see what that looks like in camera view. There you go. And now you can see how we're starting to piece this together. Say for example, you don't want to rotate to the right. You want to rotate down or something. That's all within that camera keyframe. So, so that's how you can control your camera and make different variations out of this transition because you can rotate it. You can transform it in any different way ac across any different axis. Now what you can also do, let's pop out of our camera. You can select the actual camera object here in your scene. You can go over to your object properties again, and you can add a little bit of swivel. So we'll start at our 10th keyframe. We're going to do it across the Z axis here at our 10th frame. We're going to go ahead and just click the keyframe button to start it at zero, move to 50 where this stops. And let's go ahead and make that 90 degree turn and click the keyframe to activate it. So now if we press play, we've created this camera swivel. All right. So you press play. And once this transition ends, you're just looking at this. It just looks like a bunch of blocks. So let's click off our camera view here. What we're going to do is create a new cube. So again, making sure you're in object mode, shift A. Let's go to mesh and add another cube. Let's click S and scale this up about the same size as our other guy. And then let's grab this move tool here and let's grab this green axis and back that up. So this is kind of how I build this 3D world, just by adding more objects, extruding them again, merging them together, and then projecting in that same view. So if that sounds complicated to you, let's take it step by step. Here's what this looks like in our camera view. Everything lines up properly. You see there's some gap here. So you may want to just grab this, move it closer. But again, we're going to be extruding this. So you don't want it to bleed over. I'm going to go to edit mode again. So click the drop down edit mode. I'm making sure I'm in face select, right clicking and I'm subdividing, right clicking, I'm subdividing again. And let's even right click subdivide again. So we're starting from step number one here. We're just going to select the faces and extrude a bit. So I'm just going to speed run through here. This way is a little bit more complicated, but again, I think it allows you to continue to build off of the transition and just add a lot more stuff down the road if you want to make longer animations. So here's what that looks like. Let's go to camera view and starting at the beginning, you want to make sure that none of these are bleeding into your initial scene. Object mode it, back it up a little bit. 
so that it's not in the scene. That's perfect. So here's what it looks like without our second image in. Now you see how it connects to be a full cube again once we get to our second keyframe position. So looking great. Now we need to project onto this. The only issue here is we have two different 3D objects that we are trying to project one image onto. So instead of having these two as two separate things, let's now connect these by merging them together. So again, in object mode, holding down shift to select both of these two little extruded cubes. With our mouse over top of the viewport, we're going to click control J to merge those together. So now it's just cube number one right here. And it may just be projecting this first image onto this cube. So we're going to fix that. So in our camera view here, and here's what this looks like. Let's drag into second position. Now in second position, let's go up to the top left. Let's go to UV editing mode and we need to make a new material here. We're going to select cube one. I'm just going to name this. So with this selected material properties down here, here's the material we made. We're going to create a new one. So click this plus. We're going to click new. Let's name this second image. Let's name this first image. So on second image, we're going to go and change the surface again to diffuse. Click the yellow dot next to color, change that to an image texture, click open, and let's load in our second screenshot we saved. So in projection transition, transition frame number two, open that image. So nothing changed. So what we need to do is again, holding shift, select all of these faces, and they may be a little bit smaller here because we've been extruding, doing all that good stuff. So make sure you zoom in and you really select all these little subdivided parts here. It's a little bit annoying again, but this is what you got to do. Once you've selected all those, let's click second image. Let's click assign and we're going to click U on our keyboard again, and then we're going to click project from view. And there you go. Now you've projected our second image onto our second view. So what we're going to do, let's click back into our layout tab. And here's what that looks like. And this is where you can start seeing the results looking really cool. And that's how we can transform from one image into the next. Now, if you see any issues here, like for example, there's this little part here, which just isn't correct. You can see it's still kind of left over from the last. If you're seeing that, click over to our UV editing tab once more, find the area in question. So it's right there, just a really tiny part of the subdivision. Select it, again, click your second image under your material properties, assign it, click U and project from view. So that's how you can fix any little issues that may be bleeding through, just using those steps over and over. So that's essentially everything you need to do to get started in this tutorial. From there, you just keep creating keyframes, keep repeating those steps, keep building upon it. So for those of you who are just trying to get basic understanding of this, this may be enough for you. We're going to go ahead and we're going to render this out, bring it back into our video editing software, and then just piece those together so you can see how it works. That'll finalize the basic tutorial included in this. Once I show you that, I want to come back in here and I want to show you some crazy customization stuff, some different things that you can do to add different effects going on here, add different 3D elements. You'll see on my right here, there's a start and end point for your timeline. So before we go and we render this out, uh, if you see, if I click to my render viewport shading, this is what it looks like. Not a lot of light going on in here. So in my object mode, I'm going to click shift A. I'm going to go to light. I'm going to add a little sun. That'll give me a bit more light. See in my camera view, this is very dark here. Let's just click on this little green ball, the object data properties for our sun. Bump up the strength. Let's maybe change around the angle and try and smooth these out. Again, making sure you're checking what that's looking like. Now we're ready to render. This is about a 70 frame transition. So we'll put our endpoint to 70. What you can do from here in the top, there's this little plus sign. Click that. We're going to go to video editing and we're going to go to rendering. We can click output properties here. Kind of looks like the printer printing something out. There's this little output tab. So open that up. We're going to go and change file format to FFmpeg video. And this is how you can just render a video straight out of Blender, which is an awesome feature. I wish Cinema 4D and other stuff had this. So we're going to open up encoding. We're going to, you can click these little dots right here and let's just go to this preset H.264 in MP4. So we're just going to export out an MP4. We're going to go to output quality. I'll put that on lossless. So best possible results here. Of course, change your output here. So click this little folder. You want to find where you want to save this. So in my folder, I'll name this tutorial render one and click accept. And then you just go up to render and you render the animation. And easy as that, we can export this as an MP4 straight from Blender. And then we're going to bring that back into Premiere. 
We'll set everything up and then we're gonna hop back in and start our advanced customizing. First was called tutorial render. Drag that into our project bin. So once we put that on our marker, it should be lined up. And here's what that looks like. You can see. So again, you have this gray background that's kind of there for our transition. There's two ways where you can combat this. Way number one is you can just take everything. So select it all, right click, nest it. And whenever it gets to this gray part, you could just scale it up so you're not really seeing any of that. So it should look like that. Or the second way is in Blender, whenever we're setting this up. And in object mode, just control C, control V to duplicate this. And then with your move tool, you could just move it down and then even scale it up and just position it in a way where it covers up the background. So that way, when I drag a little bit, all you're seeing in those edges are just the same color from our projected images. Another thing you guys can do in your camera, you can go to object data properties and where you're seeing orthographic scale, you can scale it in like that just to make sure you're not seeing any of those edges. Just keep in mind that if you are trying to make that looping animation where the footage starts again after this, you're going to have to compensate for your scaling that you did in Blender. So you could re-render, do that. But anyways, let's set it up so it starts right where we want it to. So once this image connects, control K and delete the excess of the clip. And our next frame starts about here. We don't need any of this. Let's grab this clip, just move it back. So now what will happen, we've created this seamless little transition where it starts on that frame, ends on our second frame, and then continues playing out just like that. And that's the main basis of how to create the transition. So that's how you can get it to go from being normal footage, transition in that 3D perspective, play out, and then you just keep repeating those steps where you take a screenshot, you create the transition, and you keep going. All right, guys, so to create longer animations or transitions, literally just rewind the video and repeat the steps that I showed you. I sped this up because I was just repeating the steps. The only other thing I'm doing different in this segment is I'm creating different camera movements. So instead of rotating 90 degrees on the Y axis, the next animation, I'll rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. That's how I'm able to get all these different camera angles that I'm switching in and out to as our animation progresses. So there's one last thing I want to show you in Blender. It's one more customization thing. So if we click off our camera view here. This is the crazy little 3D uh, world of cubes that we've been creating and projecting onto. The only thing that's actually moving in this scene is the camera here. Everything else is static. It doesn't have to be like that. You can actually add some extrusion keyframes onto these different squares here, these subdivisions, and have them moving, doing different things in the scene, which will make it a lot more interactive. Now, technically, you can keyframe an extrusion. We're going to have to use something called shape keys. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So let's start off by adding in these shape shape keys. We're going to go into object mode. So make sure this drop down menu says object mode, select our giant crazy mess here. And we're going to go over to our object data properties So click this green triangle on the right. We're going to go and click to add a shape key. This is going to be our basis for the shape. And then we're going to add another one. This is going to be what we're changing in the scene. So we can even double click, rename that too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch into edit mode. And in edit mode, we're going to go ahead and grab some cubes that we want to be moving up and down. So I'll click on this one. I'll click E and I'll just move it up. And don't worry, it's going to go back to normal once we want it to. We're just going to, we're pretty much just setting the total height that we want it to go up to. And also do it with our character here. We have him move up a bit. So once you've done that, let's go back into object mode. And you'll see how everything sets back to normal. So once we go into edit mode, once we've added those shape keys, we're essentially just making any changes that we want to create keyframes for. So now what you can do is you can grab this value here. And if you just crank that up, you're going to see how it's going to move our extrusion up and down. This allows us now to keyframe these in certain positions. So let's go into our camera view here. And let's find a good spot where we can do this. So maybe at this point, when we start transforming, we want to see our shape keys moving up. So we'll go ahead and keyframe our value at this position. So right next to value, this little dot, click it to make a keyframe. And now let's maybe crank these up. And again, we grouped these all together. If you wanted to have separate things moving in different ways, you could just keep making more shape keys. That way they're not all doing this, the exact same thing you want. You can have a little bit more randomization, but this shows you the basis of what you can do with it. Let's bump these guys up, make a keyframe. And then let's get closer to where we're going to be here. And you'll see if we don't set it back to zero, it's just going to be all messed up. So let's set it back up to zero here. Enter, add that keyframe. If for any reason, if for any reason these shape keys are in the way in edit mode, just click over here on your object data properties again and just select the basis shape keys. You can look at it 
in your normal mode. And you'll see now we've created a keyframe where they're stretching out. And then as we get closer to the end part, they're going back to normal and connecting like we want. So that's just a cool little trick. So I think that should give you guys all the tools you need to really start getting into creating things like this, creating these 3D environments. You can click your plus, go to video editing and rendering. I've already got mine saved here, so I'll go to rendering here. Back in our video editing software in Adobe Premiere, I'm gonna drag in, I'm gonna drag in tutorial render two. That's what we just got from Blender. So you'll see we forgot to change this last texture here to be the end of our little walk cycle. So let's just take one more screenshot. This will be very easy to fix. So we'll export this frame, transition frame four. I'll just quickly change this image and then re-render it out. So we're gonna go to our UV editing. So I think the best way to think of this, these images are interchangeable, but the project file containing all the different camera movements and the transitions can stay the same. So you can easily swap out these images in seconds just by going to UV editing, go to object properties, go to edit mode and just select here. Make sure you're looking at your material properties here, this little red sphere. Now you may think you may need to make a new material every time, but you could always just scroll down here, click this little folder. You could just swap in a different image. So if I just clicked frame 10, open open image. There you go. You don't even have to do all the selections again. Click U and project to view. It should already be projected to view. So please don't waste time making all these new materials, selecting them all, projecting them all. Again, really what you need are the different camera movements for the transitions. So you could always save this project file and whenever you want to use one of these different transitions that you've made, you could just swap in different images. Second thing that you need to know, instead of having to re-render this entire thing every time, say you wanna just use one of these transitions like going from here to here, what you would do was you would change this image. Let's go ahead and change this image to what we want it to be. So we'll go back to UV editing mode, find whatever material you need to swap out. Go ahead and again, scroll down, change it to whatever you want. This looks perfect and back into layout. So now we've changed both of the images here, as you can see. And let's go ahead and just render out this one segment because we're gonna be cutting it up in our video editing software anyway. So to do that, whenever you click up in the top right, whenever you go to render out your animation in your output properties here, just go to dimensions and where it says frame start, just make sure you know the set, just make sure you know the section that you need to render out. So if we go to layout, mine was from frame 60 to frame 100. So I can just set that frame start 60 and 100. Whenever I name this and render it out, it'll just be that one section. I can grab it and plop it right into Premiere. There you go. Now we have adjusted. So here's the full playthrough of this effect. Number one and number two. Also, another reminder, you can always add post work onto this in Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects. Just look through my channel, find a bunch of different cool tutorials that you can mix and match with this. You can also pick up some of my presets for Premiere to add into this transition. So and I'm going to apply this glitch wave right effect. And now, as you can see, just adding in a little bit of sauce onto there, a little bit of shake. So again, just by using the power of some of those presets or some other editing techniques you guys may have up your sleeve, you can really pimp this thing out. As always, guys, leave a like if you did enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.